Welcome back, dear traders. You are watching a recap of the American session. Trading on Wall Street is going to be quite beyond today, and traders are digesting fresh macro starts. As usual, let's start with the results of the previous trading day. On a Tuesday, US benchmark stock indexes were quite volatile and the closed mixed. At the close of the session, the Dow added 0.71%, logging the best result among other indexes. The Nasdaq decreased by 0.19%, while the S&P 500 rose by exactly the same amount, 0.19%. It reached 4,305 points. In Wednesday's pre-market, all stock indexes were in the red zone. They lost approximately 0.53 and 0.81%. The S&P was moving in the range of 4,180 and 4,320 points. Upbeat earnings reports of the top retailers, Home Depot and Walmart, facilitated a sharp increase in the stock market on Tuesday. Home Depot reported a, a comparable sales growth of 5.8% in the second quarter topping analyst expectations for a rise of 4.9%. The net profit surged to $5.17 billion, up from $4.81 billion. Walmart's total revenue jumped by 8.4%. <clears throat> Sales at Walmart's U.S. stores soared by 6.5%, beating its prior forecast for a 6% gain. The Dow Jones moved up significantly amid such positive quarterly results. However, today optimism is waning due to fresh negative earnings reports from retailers. Target reported a 90% drop in a quarterly profit on a Wednesday. The company also unveiled quarterly earnings of $183 million, or 39 cents per share, missing estimates of 72 cents. Despite the bigger discounts, inventories increased by 1.6% to $15.3 billion at the end of the quarter compared to the previous period. Chief Executive Brian Cornell said that the magnitude of the disconnect between inventory and sales growth is something I haven't seen in a really long time, maybe ever. Target shares dropped by 3% in a pre-market trading following this news. As for the shares of the top companies with the largest capitalization like Apple, Tesla, Microsoft, Amazon and Meta, they were also in a negative territory in today's pre-market trading. They lost from minus 0.19 to 1.25%. Apart from mixed earnings reports, market sentiment turned sore due to fresh macro starts. Yes, housing starts fell in July compared to the previous months, undershooting analysts' expectations. Industrial production increased while the New York Empire State Manufacturing Index declined. Today, traders are assessing use of retail sales data. Retail sales unexpectedly stalled in July. It came as an unpleasant surprise to analysts who had expected a 0.1% rise amid the recent decline in inflation. Online retail sales jumped by 2.7%, largely thanks to the Amazon Prime Day event on July 12 and 13. Increases were recorded for building material and garden equipment stores, electronics and household appliance stores, health and personal care stores, and grocery stores. However, sales of the gasoline stations stumbled by 1.8%, as the gasoline price index dropped by 7.7%. Motor vehicle and part dealers, clothing and accessories stores, and department stores also unveiled losses. Excluding automobiles, gasoline, building materials and food services, the core retail sales grew by 0.8% versus 0.7%. The retail sales report is not the main market driver today. After the opening of the session, the FMC meeting minutes for July adieu. 
The US dollar index is gaining momentum ahead of the Fed's minutes. However, its growth is quite modest. It has only added 0.23. At the time of making this video, it was trading at a high of 106.70. According to our forecast, it's likely to move in the range of 106.30 and 107.10. The greenback also asserted strength amid a decline of its main rivals. The pound sterling was rather volatile today. At the first, it rose by 0.14% against the US dollar. A bit later, it declined by 0.26%. Such sharp fluctuations occurred because of a downbeat US CPI data. Inflation soared to 10.1%, the highest level in the recent decades, exceeding market expectations of a 9.8%. As the Bank of England sees inflation above 13%, it's likely to maintain aggressive tightening. Financial markets estimate there is a 96% chance that the Bank of England will raise its benchmark interest rate by 0.5 percentage points to 2.25 percent at its next meeting to be held on September 15, marking the seventh consecutive rate hike and pushing borrowing costs to the highest level since 2008. In addition, the Reserve Bank of New Zealand also announced a fourth consecutive half percentage point rate increase on a Wednesday, adding that it would continue raising rates. However, potential rate hikes have dashed investors' hopes of a cooling global inflation and a shift to softer stance by central banks. In this light, minutes from the latest Federal Reserve Monetary Policy meeting is of a crucial importance, even despite a number of significant changes in the statistics presented following the regulators' meeting. As for the USD card pair, the loon is strengthened against the, its US counterpart, rising to 1.2830. However, today the greenback has managed to take the lead, thus the Canadian dollar re reversed the previous day's uh, hefty gains. At the time of preparing this material, the pair is trading upwards around 1.2930. Today, analysts expect the quotes to move within the range of 1.2880 and 1.2880. 2970. The Bank of Canada is also among the world's central banks uh, racing to take an aggressive rate rise stance. Analysts suggest that the regulator will continue to hike lending rates at a rapid pace, although Canada's core inflation rate was down for the first time in more than a year, the average of the three central banks um, in the central tendency measures used by the central bank accelerated to 5.3% from a 5.2% in the previous month. At its latest meeting, the Bank of Canada surprised the markets with a 100 basis point move, which was the largest increase since 1998. Moreover, it hinted at further monetary policy tightening to curb inflation well above the target level. No analysts anticipate the regulator raising rates by at least 75 basis points. As for the oil market, it talks about the possible entry of Iranian oil into the market, raise the prospects of supply growth. The nations are negotiating with the Tehran over the country's nuclear enrichment activities. A breakthrough in the, the stocks could lead to resume the supplies from Iran and increase production. Notably, Iran is OPEC's third largest oil producer after Saudi Arabia and Iraq. It's a crude oil production capacity is about 4 million barrels per day. While the issue remains um, unresolved, um, oil quotes have eased at the pace of a downtrend. Thus, today's trading activity is a sluggish. Brand futures were down 0.03% to $90.29 per barrel, while WTI futures set at 0.26%. Speaking of the cryptocurrency market, Bitcoin is still following the Nasdaq. The asset shows a direct correlation with the major tech stocks and an inverse correlation with the US dollar index. Today, the digital currency is losing value in anticipation of minutes from the Fed's latest meeting. By the time of preparing this material, BTC has slid by 2.23% to the level of $23,400.
Nevertheless, the situation in the cryptocurrency market is not so dismal. Singapore-based cryptocurrency platform Crypto.com has joined the UK Financial Conduct Authorities register. And this means that Crypto.com has approved to offer crypto asset services and products to customers in the United Kingdom in compliance with the anti-money laundering and terrorist financing rules. At the same time, the chain analysis estimates that so far this year, the amount stolen in the cryptocurrency thefts has increased by 60% and the report also showed that around $1.9 billion worth of digital tokens had been stolen by hackers from January to July. It's difficult to predict how deep Bitcoin will slide on today's Fed minutes. However, given market sentiment, the trading range is likely to be wide. In the worst-case scenario, the lower boundary will be at $22,500. In the best-case scenario, the price will rise to $24,100. That's our daily review of US trade. Please keep in mind that volatility may increase and primary market impulses can be misleading. May your trading be lucrative. See you soon.